So here is Retsi, uh, a blatant OTC promotion that I got a pretty good piece of short. And as of recording this, I just closed out the last of the position maybe five minutes ago. And it was overall about a $23,000 gain, uh, very nice profits on it, although I would have liked to have had a little more size than I did. Um, but let's just talk a little bit about RETC and the thinking behind it and what led me into shorting it. Uh, first of all, like I said, blatant promotion. Um, I think like Pro Trader Daily or some website like that has been sending out emails on it every single day. I've heard some rumors of phone calls going out about it too. Um, if any of you know other websites that were pushing this, feel free to comment and let me know what they were. I'd be very curious to see. Um, but a nice multi-day OTC promotion. Um, I mean, it started back in June uh, when the volume first started coming in. So, I mean, I, I know I had a couple questions on Twitter. One person had mentioned, like, you know, like, was I interested because it was a new company? And it's really not a new company. It's just it just started trading because they just started promoting it. Like, and I guess they had a ticker change in the last five days or so. Um, so that kind of contributed to the brief chart history also. But yeah, RETC, I mean, it's blatant of a pump and dump as they come. You've got compensated emails going out. You've got this nice manipulated chart run up. And really, it's all smoke and mirrors. So it's not uncommon when you see charts like this to see the big, crazy, bloody red candle crash days. And that's what I wanted to position myself to get a piece of. Now, uh, we had another one of these earlier in the week, ENVV. Uh, let me pull up a chart of that for you really quick. And ENVV, I totally, whoops, there we go. Um, ENVV, I totally missed that one. Um, you know, same sort of thing, just day after day after day, green candle after green candle, it was running up. Uh, it wasn't that high priced yet, though. It was only about 80 cents, so I didn't have a super high interest in it. And then it gaps down over a dime um, on Monday, and I didn't really want to chase a big gap down. I might have shorted some if it had gone towards red-green, but there was just no morning push, and it got obliterated to really bloody candles in a day. So, I mean, we went from the highs of about 85 cents down to almost a dime in two days. And that's just the nature of these things and how they unwind. Um, they just get really ugly really quickly, you know, stair step up, elevator down is the phrase you'll hear. Um, so RETC, why did I get going on that one? And bear with me here while I change this again. I'm using uh, big charts to show you the charts here just because uh, RETC does have a little briefer of a trading history on my DAS platform uh, since they did that ticker change and this will actually show everything in the entire run-up. Um, I know one question I get a lot, um, where am I finding shares to short? Centerpoint Securities, guys. Uh, it's always Centerpoint, pretty much. Uh, every now and then Cobra, but um, their borrows haven't been great the past few weeks. So, I mean, I'm, I'm in multiple brokers. I just kind of look everywhere, but usually it's Centerpoint where I'm getting my shorts. Uh, now, RETC, uh, I had a certain line of thinking with this one where a lot of times the approach I might take is uh, if you have green day after green day after green day, I want to wait until the first time the stock is going green red and then try to short it on that. Now, here was the problem with that. RETC, if you're looking at these daily candles here, um, almost every single day it was going red and then saving itself. So a green to red move really wasn't the most reliable indicator. Um, and then combine that with the fact that um, past experience has taught me that when an OTC gets weak and starts to panic, it is damn hard to get a fill. So I knew that if I wanted to get any kind of size on this trade, I was going to have to be shorting it on the way up. I was going to have to kind of build myself in slowly and you know, try to be conservative and careful with it so I don't take a huge loss, but I had to be willing to be early and withstand a little bit of pain and if it had gotten to the point where it was going a lot against me and then had its red day, just been really conservative with my covers and trim back size. Um, now, in this case, I was fortunate because I timed it pretty well. Um, I started shorting on Wednesday, um, this little candle here. And I, I had tried a little bit in the morning um, in the high 240s, and it saved itself pretty quickly and popped back green, and I cut about half of the position on that, um, you know, just lost a couple hundred bucks there. But um, I saved something like 6,000 shares. And as the day went on, um, and, you know, I could probably actually show you this one on DAS. I know they have the history for that. Um, so let's go back a couple days here on DAS.
So I, I had a little bit short right out of the gate here on Wednesday, and then it popped back and cut half. And as the day went on, it just wasn't running. It looked really weak to me. So I, I had planned maybe to like have this be my starter day, or I was like, okay, I'll take five to ten thousand shares, and then just kind of start slowly building in every couple of days, adding shares and sizing up my position. Um, but it just struck me as so weak all day, especially when it kind of had this next crack attempt here around 1 p.m. And yes, it saved again at 2.45, um, but that was a little bit of a red flag to me. That was the weakest action it had shown in days. If you had looked back further on uh, the chart at different intraday, I mean, it would just kind of be like a morning dip and then steady ramp all day. But this topped out really quickly and then just was sideways, 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 a little bit of a crack and a save, and then it still just couldn't ramp back and set new highs. So overall, it felt really weak to me. And the longer the day went on and the longer it felt weak, the more and more convinced I was to keep building in. So overnight, I went about 30,000 shares short. I think I had about a 250 or 251 average. And then yesterday, um, you know, I thought it might panic right out of the gate yesterday, and it didn't quite do that, but it also didn't show any signs of spiking again. I mean, it had the one little brief push to 261, and then it was more of the same, just sideways, 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 and slow, steady fade. And the whole time, there was just this one market maker, Micah, who was just soaking on the bid, propping, 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 but no one else was buying. Like, there was really barely any hits on the offer. So, yeah, just everything combined made this thing feel so weak to me. It felt like it was running out of steam, and it had been up for multiple days in a row, and I was actually in the process, I had just located more shares and was thinking like, okay, I'm going to start putting more on here just because it feels so damn weak. And I only added about 2,000 shares before the bottom fell out. So uh, that was, you know, a little disappointing. I would have loved to have added more. Um, and once the bottom fell out, I, I did try to add a bit right on the green-red move. And my thinking was right that it would be really tough to fill because I didn't fill a single share. And I mean, I was only willing to chase so far, but... Um, I got, I got no ads into the weakness as it snapped green-red, as it snapped below the previous day's lows of 245. Um, so it was, it was a little disappointing there. And then after the panic uh, had set its first low and the first bounce had failed, I started covering into this next dip. I got my size down. Um, you know, I, I had a couple covers and ads back in the 210 area here, but basically I covered a bunch in the one. 60 and 175 area, and then added a little back at 210. So I had 18,000 shares overnight coming into today, and just was thinking like, okay, maybe it'll be like ENVV. The bottom will fall out tomorrow. We'll have another big, ready, bloody red day. Um, but today's action has not cooperated really. Um, it's really been holding this 180 area. Um, I did not like it this morning when it had the little morning washout down to 180. And then it popped back and went red-green. I covered some shares here at $2 into the strength, which uh, wasn't the best cover, but I wanted to just protect myself and downsize a little further. And then uh, throughout all this choppy, garbage, illiquid consolidation the rest of the day, I've just been slowly covering and took off the rest in the 190s. Uh, so I uh, got myself flat, and maybe I'll try to put some back on if I do see some signs of like the 180 level cracking, then the pump might really be over. But some of these uh, more illiquid pump and dumps have been coming back recently. Um, like ZPAS, I remember that promotion had multiple fake deaths and then multi-day bounces and every now and then you can see one that will set new highs. So not saying for sure that's what RETC will do, but um, you know, con considering we have a higher low today and it's just not really dying any further like I think it should, I'm just going to take the rest of my gains, I'm going to be conservative, and now I'm going to cross my fingers they bring it back, because if they do bring it back, uh, it should set up for another reshort opportunity, and the results should be very similar to this time. So hope you guys could take something away from this. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for watching.